We're with Dr. Anthony Fauci, Director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Dr. Fauci, you talk about emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases. What are examples of each of those? Well, an emerging disease is a, a, a disease that's essentially brand new, that we uh, in society, a civilization, have never experienced before. A prototypic, extraordinary example of a new disease is HIV AIDS, which we first recognized in 1981, which was probably around for a decade or so before then. But that was a brand new disease that's emerging. A re-emerging infectious disease is one that's been around for quite a while, maybe indefinite period of time, but it reappears either in a new geographic location or in a new form. Typical example for us here in the United States would be West Nile virus. We never had West Nile virus until 1999 when what happened was that either an infected person or a mosquito or the bird carrier took a trip essentially from, we think it's almost certainly from Israel, over to New York, landed at Kennedy Airport, and then the mosquitoes that were here then started to spread it. So now we have West Nile virus in the United States that's endemic, likely will be here indefinitely, but we never had it before 1999. Okay, and in terms of the, the impact on the health of Americans, of health in the U.S., what are the, what are the emerging or re-emerging diseases right now that kind of worry you the most? Well, the thing that we're always concerned about is the emergence of a pandemic influenza because respiratory transmitted viruses are those that are very difficult to control because there's very little you can do about that. They tend to be able to be controlled by vaccines, but when you have a new virus emerges, it takes time to get a vaccine that's ready to essentially distribute so that you can protect people. So most public health officials that worry about things worry mostly about the emergence of a disease that's respiratory born, likely an influenza that has a considerable degree of morbidity and some mortality. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about media coverage of these issues. Uh, a lot of the big worries in recent years, bird flu, SARS, Ebola, generated massive head headlines in the U.S., but never turned into a major health threat here in the right. U.S. Um, was the media blowing things out of proportion, or did smart public health strategies just you know, defeat what the potential threat was? I think the media in general did a very good job, both with Ebola and with the situation with Zika. Uh, there was a lot of fear when the two nurses from Texas got infected when they were taking care of the Ebola-infected person who came from Liberia. I don't think the press blew it out of proportion. I think what they did is that they reflected in their reporting the unreasonable concern that was uh, essentially rampant in the United States that we were going to have an explosion, even though we public health officials made it very clear that Ebola does not spread by casual contact from someone who is otherwise well. It's spread in a healthcare setting when someone is desperately ill. The, the, the press reported that accurately, but the public nonetheless still got very concerned about that. Okay, now you said that uh, uh, we need a universal influenza vaccine. How likely is one to come along and what are the, the financial or scientific uh, hurdles to doing so? Well, a universal influenza vaccine is one that will be able to protect against all strains of influenza. You know, influenza changes a bit from season to season. We call that a drift. And that's the reason why you have to get vaccinated every year because you want to make sure you get as complete coverage as possible. Every once in a while you get a pandemic where there's a major change in the influenza and that's called a shift. And the reason is that there's part of the influenza protein molecule on its surface that mutates and changes. But there's part of that molecule that doesn't change from strain to strain or even from pandemic to pandemic. So what we're working on right now is a vaccine to make a response against that part of the virus that doesn't change. Hence it would be a universal vaccine protecting against all. We're working on it right now. I'm cautiously optimistic that within a period of time, probably measured in several years, we'll get at least a version of it, which we will hopefully will then be able to improve upon. Okay, and finally Zika. Uh, there was a big worry last year, the last couple of years. How big of a threat is it today in the U.S.? Well, it isn't a major threat for a substantial outbreak, but there's always a concern, particularly in the southeast and Gulf Coast states of our nation, of the continental United States, where there's plenty of Aedes aegypti mosquito, that if we have a lot of cases in South America or Puerto Rico and they travel to the United States, then we'll wind up getting local transmission, which we did see during the major outbreak in South America. 
There were not a lot of cases, about 200 plus cases of local transmission in Florida. I don't think this is gonna be a universal major threat to the totality of the United States, but I think it's something we absolutely need to keep our eye on. Thank you.